Hi there, this is Atai Kide at Global Media Europe International. Just came back from Nigeria, Akwaibom State, Uyo to be specific, and had an interview with Governor Gosulak Babio and the SSG Omano Konumana. I also had an opportunity to travel around the state and see for myself the projects taking place right now in Akwaibom State. I've got video footage of that. I went to Kran and uh, I met those children who've been accused of being witches and wizards. And guess what? This time around, we gave them a makeover uh, but right now it's the interview with governor Gosulak Babio watch this your excellency you have been called the governor in a hurry because statement that you made at your swearing in and I'll, I'll quote you you said my government is in a hurry we're ready to make sacrifices so that the vast majority of our people can enjoy a better life can you explain what you meant by that statement well maybe really I was trying to underscore the fact that at the stage of development I found in Akwai Bum said, uh, I, I do believe, I believe then and I still believe now that we could have done better. I think probably because of the fact that Nigeria had passed through a lot in terms of interruptions in governance, from the military down to a lot of uh, thwarted civilian regimes. So the aspect of dedication and continuity in governance, you know, those things were totally absent. And so the result was that where we found ourselves, we probably would have done far, far, far better if there was continuity in government. And then one government comes to build on what others had done, and at the end, the people would have been better off. That was why I made that statement that we are in a hurry to build upon the foundation that had been laid by succeeding of course, by the last administration, you know, uh, somehow this is the first time in the history of Nigeria that we have had democracy lasting for onwards of eight to ten years. And so there was need for us to move in a hurry while democracy lasts, to build on the foundation laid by uh, the previous civilian uh, governments. So, you know, so far my actions have shown clearly the, uh, that the the urgency I enumerated at the beginning, that we meant business, and of course it wasn't just a mere pledge. And that's why when we took over in 2007, we commenced immediately the massive rehabilitation of existing infrastructure in the state, and we started what we may call the rebranding of our private state. And, uh, some people like to call it total transformation. Uh, and of course from the road infrastructure, yes, we met a state where the capital, we owe, had uh, a lot of roads done, so you could have a lot of link roads in the state and all that. The quality notwithstanding, but at least there were roads for people to pass within the state capital. But outside the capital, there was total notching of teeth, if I like to use <laughs> that kind of uh, language. For instance, in the uh, Economic Benet Senatorial District, the entire Senatorial District, there was no link road between two major urban cities of Habak and Economic Benet. The federal stretch of road there had decayed. So for over 22 years, nobody could pass from one end of Ikarek Benet to the other. And then within the urban city itself, we had well over 26 roads that were tied in the 1960s and probably used briefly in the 1970s. Then from the 80s, the roads had gone. A uh, place like Market Road, no vehicle had entered Market Road in 19 years. Hmm. Amazing, but this is the truth. If, uh, so we had to commence immediate action. And I said we were in a hurry to rebrand a quiet bomb set to transform the state. We are still in a hurry. That's why we are not sleeping because time is of the essence. So we started with about 168 urban roads as soon as I, I took over as governor of the state. And to the glory of God, in under two years now, if you go to those places, mm -hmm. you go to Ikotipena, you go to Eket, you go to Ikotabasi, you go to Oron, and you come to you itself. Uh, the story is totally different today. Yes. In fact, our children will not remember what bad roads you know, uh, really look mm -hmm. like because today the entire state is almost getting transformed. For instance, in Ekede alone, we undertook 49 urban roads. And 49 urban roads? 49 Ekede in Ekede alone. As I speak now, mm -hmm. over 35 of them have been completed. Yes. And uh, we went wrong and we commissioned about 15. We left about 20 for the next uh, set of commissioning, which I hope the, my party at the center will come to assist us. And in Oran, for instance, we are doing about 34 urban roads. And the 34 urban roads, many of them have commissioned about 12, and many others are ready for commissioning as I speak with you now. In Ikarek, we started with about 26 urban roads. If you go there, the story is totally different. 
It's so a, it's a, a new city. a new town. Yes, and uh, I can tell you when we went to Kerikbena, the mm. road particularly I mentioned, mm. the a woman came out in the crowd with over five hundred thousand people. She brought out her wrapper, stood naked, mm. and insisted that the governor must walk on her wrapper. And I, I held her, you know, the security tried to stop her, and I said, "But why are you going naked? What is the problem?" She said, "I want you history is made today. I'm a yam trader." For 17 years, I dropped out of business. Two of my children could not go to school mm. because there was no road for a truck to get to this market. And unless you have money to hire a vehicle and go to Benue State, no vehicle agreed to bring yam into this market. Mm. And so my business died. To, for me to be alive today, to see this road done and commissioned in my lifetime, I want the governor to work on this wrapper. I'll keep it for my children and my grandchildren to come and see. So you worked on the wrapper? I worked sense. on the wrapper. It's on video. And I would have all that they give it to you before you leave. So you take a look at it. And this is real. Mm -hmm. People who were with me started weeping. So this was the state of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. In one of the roads, uh, we call Cardinal uh, Road, named after the first Cardinal of the Catholic Church yes. in West Africa. Yes. Nobody had gone through one end of the stretch to the other in 39 years. In fact, in half of the road, plantains were planted on the road. Mm. Yes, this is real. And so we came, and if you see that road today, it's a major thoroughfare. Wonderful. It's fantastic to the glory of God. And so this may not, you know, in other developed cities, yes. this may not be a story for them because normally government should do roads, government should do water, government should do electricity, government should do infrastructure. But where they were totally, totally absent, and the people went through horrendous suffering. Mm. So you can imagine why the people are excited with what is happening today. We also have certain roads that link two states together in Nigeria. Where that happened, those ones are regarded as federal roads. Yes. In Akwaibom said, in over 35 years, no federal roads were done by the federal government. I'm sorry. This is the truth. And so if you are coming in from Calabar, yes, that noticed, stretch is a federal road. I noticed you that a lot. Done. And so when we got about 29 kilometers into the capital, I decided to move in there to end the suffering of my people. So we started the dualization of that road. I did not just say, I want to repair the road. Yes. I said, let me leave an enduring legacy and do a road that for 10, 20 years, the people will not have to suffer again. So we brought in a first class construction company and we are dualizing that road. And it has about two bridges. And as I speak now, more than 60% of the job has been done. Mm -hmm. And my people are happy. So if you pass there now, the story is different. I, I, I came through that stretch of road yeah. and I was amazed at the improvement. Well, also take a trip to Ikadegbene and move between the federal road of Ikadegbene and Abak. It's also yes. been dualized. Mm -hmm. And then when you take cognizance of the fact that nobody had driven a vehicle from one end to the other in over 19 years, mm -hmm. then you will see why the people are getting excited. Wow. And as if you are going towards there, you take a trip between Afarabo mm -hmm. in Abak and one of my local governments called it Mekbo, up to Ica. Mm -hmm. And you see that they had glamoured for a road even from 1963. The last time any government looked at them was during the 1963 uh, uh, budget of Eastern Region mm -hmm. and the road was not done. So you know, for 40 years, they glamoured for a road to be done for them. But under two years, you can go there now. It's a beauty to behold. We are almost 80% in terms of completion. Mm -hmm. And the people are very excited. So it's for, for us in Aquarium, it's like a liberation. Yes. The same thing happens in the people of Ibiona. We call uh, the people of Ibiona, one of the governments here, where we have, it's almost like a food basket for, for the state. But they had no road. So they have a lot of agricultural products but no means of conveying those things to the centre. Mm. And that's what we are doing today. Mm. The road is being done, we call it Nungudo, we call it Taosei mm. Konomama. Mm. Mm. And of course, between Uyo, the capital, and, uh, and uh, a place like, uh, like the new international airport we are doing, mm. we, are, uh, we, are, we are dualizing and building a brand new federal stretch of road. And uh, this also goes for a place like Enensit and others. And there is one that you'll be very impressed with. We call it a Tebi, all the way to Ewa. Is in the Mbo, it's like it, around Axis. And that road is such that it has one of the longest bridges in the state. Nobody had, the, the people who live in those areas have mm. not seen a car since they were born. This is the mm. first time with the bridge we are doing for them now mm. that they can now. So it's, a, it's a, the story of underdevelopment mm. and the kind of decayed infrastructure yes. in the 